One incredible feature about birds is their feathers that come in a surprising diversity of colors and forms. These soft fringe plumes are unique to birds. The only other animals that had feathers as far as we know are their dinosaur ancestors. It's clear that feathers have been around quite a long while, allowing much time for the function and complexity to grow and refine over thousands of years. Let's take a look at five cool facts about feathers. Enjoy! Birds are covered in thousands of feathers. Even just a small songbird can have anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000. It's not surprising to learn that the smallest birds, such as hummingbirds, have the least. However, for their very small size, roughly 3 to 5 inches depending, having 900 or more feathers is quite a lot. Basically, they have more feathers per body size than other birds. For species that have the most, they are usually larger, like the tundra swan, who has something like 25,216, which, yes, was actually counted by someone. Interestingly, 80% of the feathers were found on their long neck. Emperor penguins have a lot too, but in their case they have much smaller feathers. Still, people counted about 80,000 on one bird. That's around 60 per square inch. These birds live in some extreme weather. All those small feathers keep the penguins insulated and waterproof. One wonderful thing about feathers is the fact they are multifunctional structures, providing weather protection, camouflage, helping a bird attract a mate, and can even be used for communication. In winter, the soft fluffy down between a bird's outer feathers and its skin helps trap air close to the bird's warm body, keeping them from freezing. They can also fluff out these feathers, creating more warm air pockets, providing additional protection from the cold. In rainy weather, the outer feathers, the stiff and mostly flat ones, provide waterproofing, keeping the bird dry. And they also serve as a wind barrier, sunscreen, and protection from insects. For some birds, feathers help them blend into their environment, therefore avoiding detection. They can also be used as a communication tool, such as blue jays with their perky crest that when laid flat on their head, signals to their mates that they are in a relaxed, calm state or when raised on top of their head, signaling aggression. Besides all of that, feathers even assist birds in attracting a mate through bright, beautiful colors or elaborate displays. The myriad of functions is rather fun and amazing. Birds are very light creatures for the most part. Their bones are hollow, their frame is small, and, well, their feathers, you know, the term light as a feather. There just isn't much weight to them. This is really true for birds that fly, which have the lightest of everything to help keep them airborne. For birds, as much as 15 and 20% of their total body weight comes from feathers, and always weighs more than their whole skeleton, which by contrast is often less than half the weight of the feathers. They really are just fluff. There is a dazzling array of beautiful colors and assortments of hues with birds. From the deep red of a male northern cardinal, to the soft blue of an eastern bluebird, and not to mention the multicoloration of the stunning painted bunting. There are different ways in which feathers acquire these shades. Many colors come from three different pigments. Melanin is manufactured by the bird producing black and dark brown feathers that are actually stronger, providing more resistance to wear. Porphyrins make red, brown, green, and even pink colors. Birds' bodies create this by stringing together amino acids that provide vivid colors, which when seen through a bird's eyes that can see in the ultraviolet spectrum could be more intensely bright compared with what we see. And then there are the carotenoids, which provide red, orange, and yellow hues. In this case, they are acquired through diet, such as when a bird eats either plants containing carotenoids or animals that consumed said plants. Probably the most interesting though is how a color like blue is created. There are no blue pigments in their feathers. In this case, it's all due to how feathers are structured on the microscopic level, sending back to our eyes the blue color we see through a phenomenon called light scattering. Feathers can even save their lives. 
We all know that birds molt at least once a year. This is the only way birds can deal with the wear and tear that happens over a period of time. It also serves to grow back a brighter plumage for attracting a mate. But there is a strange type of molt that happens sometimes. When a bird is frightened or attacked by a predator, it can drop all of its tail feathers at one time. This tail dropping phenomenon is called fright, stress, or shock molt, and is a survival mechanism that helps a bird escape, leaving a predator with nothing but a mouth or talon full of feathers. Sacrificing its tail for its life is a pretty good trade-off, since it's only temporary with new tail feathers growing in after four to six weeks. I think molting is one of the most fascinating adaptations. The more I learn and become familiar with birds, they seem to never cease to amaze me. All the various ways they've adapted and the ways in which they survive is incredible. I just really love them. Even long before I acquired knowledge on how astounding these feathered creatures are, our living little dinosaurs. Of all that I shared, what do you find the most interesting about feathers? Did I forget anything? Comment below and let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed this video. Take care. Happy fall birding.